Guten Tag everyone, my name is Volda and this is my service dog Dexter and today's video is a video request by the APS Life that asked can I do a story of how I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So that's what we're going to do today. Ready? Go. So I was diagnosed when I was only 15 months old. So most of this information comes directly from my parents instead of my memories, obviously. Basically, um, just after I had turned a year old, I started to get really skinny. I was pretty much bone on my arms and my legs, but I had a really, really large stomach from all the gas and everything that was trapped inside, which is common when you are burning all the fat in your body just to try and stay alive because I couldn't really eat anything. So before I got diagnosed, we went on a camping trip and this is when my parents really started to notice that something was wrong. We were um, only able to have me eat blueberries, which if you guys don't know, blueberries are a very, very good hyperglycemic, or sorry, hypoglycemic food um, because they don't have many carbs and they are slow sugars. So I would only eat blueberries and I was getting super skinny and the only other thing I would eat was breast milk at that point in time. So when we got home from this camping trip and my parents were like, okay, we need to take her into the doctors. So we went to the doctors and everything. They did all the blood tests. And so they were like, okay, you guys can go home and we'll call you guys with the results. So my dad's at work and my mom is in the house. She's downstairs, I'm upstairs in my crib and she gets a call from the doctor. So the doctor calls her up and they're like, oh, how's Rachel? My mom goes, she's upstairs sleeping. And so the doctor goes, are you sure she's sleeping? Now, of course, at this point, my mom freaks out. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Are you sure she's sleeping? So my mom runs upstairs as fast as she possibly can to check that I'm still breathing and still has no clue what's going on. Doctor hasn't said anything, just, are you sure she's sleeping? So, the doctor finally is like, okay, we think she has type 1 diabetes. And my mom just goes, phew, you know, she thought I was, you know, in a coma or something, was never going to wake up. She didn't know what was happening. But, you know, knowing that type 1 diabetes is manageable and, con and not curable, but um, controllable enough to live. But, and they added my dad to during that call, so my dad already knew what was going on. They both rushed to the hospital and then there they had to do the whole IVs, um, insulin drip. My blood sugar at this time was about like 840 I believe. So blood sugars were through the roof. The doctors didn't know how I was alive at that point in time because I was such a frail small child and even 800 blood sugar could kill an adult. So but they were able to get my blood sugars down. I was in diabetic ketoacidosis for quite a while, but we ended up being all right. And my parents after that learned, of course, they had to give me shots when I was super young because I wasn't large enough. I was a very small baby. I was only 5.6 pounds. And so they could only do shots and they had to do it like in my legs or in my arm to give me my insulin. And then when I was five years old, that was the first time that I ever got my insulin pump. So for those of you guys that don't know, this is an insulin pump. This is a Medtronic one, which is the brand that I use. And basically there is a reservoir of insulin in the bottom that goes through this tube and into my body. So I do not have to take shots throughout the day. This gives me the normal basal rate which is the continuous insulin, and then plus the bolus for whatever I eat. So if I have a soda, a soda is, depending on the kind, about like 42 carbs. You would put Dr. 42 Pepper. carbs. Dr. Pepper is 42 carbs. <laughs> um, so you'd put 42 carbs in, and then it would calculate how much um, units-wise of insulin I need to cover that sugar. You're also supposed to test about four to eight times a day. That doesn't necessarily happen, but you're supposed to. <laughs> oh, Hex! Hex, shut up! Good boy! 
that's all he hears. Shut up! <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, a little bit about living with um, something like diabetes. I, since I have had it all my life, I haven't really known what it's like without it. So I can't really help people who get diabetes later on in life. But having it throughout my life has kind of, I guess, made things better and worse where I'm not missing out on anything. Um, normal life has always been normal for me, but it was super hard throughout middle school and high school. In middle school, it definitely made depression a lot worse, and I'm sure anyone out there with a chronic illness knows that it messes with your brain and not just your body. So I had really bad depression because of it, and because of that, I just wanted to ignore it completely. I didn't bolus for anything. I didn't test. My blood sugars were in the 300, 400s all the time. And that now caused me to not be able to feel when my blood sugar is going low. So if I am, you know, in 200 or whatever, and my blood sugar automatically drops, I won't feel that until it's already at like 60. So that's part of the reason why Dexter is learning scent work for diabetes. But and then high school things got a little bit better and I'm now able to manage it much better. But because my blood sugar was so high for so long, I do have problems with my eyes and I have certain muscle issues from being high so long that it causes pain, especially in your feet. Um, people have had to have toes amputated from high blood sugars. People have had to have fingers amputated, that type of thing. So it's much better controlled now, but still not perfect, but at least it is controllable. Okay, so what is type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder where the body basically attacks your pancreas. Your pancreas is an organ in this general vicinity that produces insulin, which regulates the sugar amount in your blood, which you intake when eating food. And you're supposed to have insulin to counteract that, but my body can't make that insulin. Now, there are a few different types of diabetes. There is type 1, also known as juvenile diabetes, which is a genetic version of diabetes. So basically, you have your two parents, and they each pass down alleles. So if you have a dominant and a recessive allele, like my dad, or a recessive-recessive allele, like my mom, you have the possibility of getting two recessive alleles, which is what I have, which causes me to have the genetic code for diabetes. Now, someone who has the genetic code for diabetes doesn't necessarily have it. My mother has recessive recessive, but she doesn't have diabetes. She could get it, she could develop it. It takes something, um, some type of shock in the body to spur it on, and oftentimes they don't really know why it happened at that particular moment. Um, it is completely different from type two. Type two is, again, where the pancreas stops working, but this is due to lifestyle. If you're eating a ton of sugar all the time, every day, your pancreas cannot keep up with that, and it can cause you to develop type two diabetes. Uh, type two diabetes can be cured with exercise and healthy eating and a healthy lifestyle. And then there is a type three. I am not too familiar on type three. All I know is that it has to do more with the brain causing the insulin not to work properly. Um, you would have to ask a doctor about type three, but there's a type three. And I believe there might be type four, so. Ask a doctor or Google. Google is a good place. Except for don't Google your symptoms, because you have cancer. Or brain tumor. That's living in the city for you. Oh, stop. <laughs> of course, as soon as we start dancing, they stop. <laughs> now some common misconceptions about type 1 diabetes. Now, growing up with diabetes, kids in my classes would always see me prick my arm with a needle, since my fingers were too small to do it. But I would prick my arm, and I'd get to eat snacks during class, and have juice boxes and everything, and everyone was so jealous, wondering, What's up with her? Why does she get special privileges? 
So there was a lot of jealousy kind of towards that I could eat during class and people didn't really understand that, but I often had to eat if I had low blood sugar to bring it back up, which luckily all the teachers did really good. Um, kids also would often think that it's contagious. You cannot catch diabetes, you have to have the gene code for it. But of course, in elementary school, kids don't really understand that, so they just automatically assume, oh, there's this different thing, I might catch it, which is not how diabetes works at all. So. That's the case, I had a long time ago because I get stabbed with his needles all the time. Needles are fun, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys like content like this, go ahead and hit that notification icon and you'll get my videos as notifications on your phone when I upload. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.